So when I say uh, the memory is still very much alive, this is kind of what I mean. So obviously we're underneath the monument, so this is, but you can see all kinds of symbolism and uh, um, it's built to keep the memory alive. So 1941 to 1945, here's a list of uh, names, quite incomplete, so I'm not sure what names have been selected for here. Uh, I, I have no idea what these messages say, so maybe someone can help translate. But this is what I mean. It's not just a, you know, a bust or something that's forgotten in a park. Um, or, you know, some plaque on a wall. It's still very, very much, uh, yeah, very much alive. There's a reason why it should stay alive, and uh, yeah, as the guy was saying yesterday, you know, these things happen over and over again, and sometimes, and it's not always the same people who end up uh, on the on the sharp edge, let's say, of the sword. So it's very important that these things are maintained I think for you know for national memory and uh, for these things but even for who visits and who uh, and you know who for some reason or another gets in in touch with these things and uh, these events because um, yeah it's important to know they these things happen and have happened and the scale to which they happen yeah I'm repeating myself a little here but I also think it's quite important. So, uh, so what we have here is uh, a number. Of, these are cities. So there's Moscow, Kiev, Odessa. They all have a medal. So I think they're all cities. Uh, okay. I'm not sure what this is. The guy just mentioned. But also another really, really nice thing, I think, is that the, you see people, I don't know if it's the government doing it or if it's the people, but the memory is kept fresh. You see flowers on memorials, they're always fresh. I've seen this even uh, on the train going by some cemeteries along the road. You can see um, a lot of these tombs are covered in flowers, fresh flowers, even if they're in a small village or something. Uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, it shows that these, um, yeah, that this historical memory is, is still well alive in people's uh, in people's minds. This is the eternal flame. Uh, so I think this was present in a lot of cities and a lot of towns in former Soviet Union and I'm not sure exactly if it represents a uh, memory of the people, uh, well I think it represents everything, a memory of the tragedy but a uh, celebration of the victory and uh, I guess, uh, so you'll see this in a lot of cities, uh, apparently in some places where the economy is maybe less uh, generous. Um, they switched it off. Um, oh, here it's still alive and running. You can see the hammer and sickle. Uh, this is one of the countries where these symbols aren't removed. Um, many other places, as hopefully we'll see soon in Ukraine, uh, they instead have chosen to remove most of these symbols. Here you see, I guess, you know, there's Lenin on the flag and there you can see an aviator uh, an infantryman uh, I'm not sure who the others are some might be partisans possibly but these are, are the I guess it's the people of Belarus uh, 
fighting against oppression and annihilation, I would say, not just oppression. So you have tanks, hammer and sickle, tending to the fallen. And here is, I guess, the memory part. So this is a little more of a... Yeah. So look at these reefs. Look at the size of them. It's uh, quite impressive. And here is the actual action. So I think these are actually the citizens or partisans, probably. Because you see they're not, uh, they're not dressed in uniform, not all of them at least. And at least one of them seems to be uh, using a German uh, Luger gun. And actually one has a German uh, grenade. So these are probably uh, cel celebrating partisans and, you know, the population fighting against the oppressor. So, yeah, uh, pretty intense, I would say. And um, moving on, I'll have to save some battery now, so I won't be filming the whole walking around and stuff. So, yeah, see you later.